This is our third and final reading from uh, Pride this year, Pride Day, uh, with myself, Chelsea, and Caitlin. Um, this is probably the most interesting story we read that day, and I can't wait to have Caitlin on again. She's a big fan of Lovecraft, and we'll have to see what LGBTQ slash tentacle related things we can read with her in the future. So, without further ado... Back at it. Back in the saddle again? Yes. Uh, uh, we just Still very fried from Still Pride my Festival. Christ. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting not... to feel the sunburn starting to like come to the, yeah, the top like... of my skin. <laughs> it's slowly. I can see it. Yeah. It's like right there. Yeah, right yeah. always very right there here. firm farmer's tan right there. Uh, yep. Which will immediately turn white as soon as the burns. Gone yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Um, we got. We, we're also glittered. We got glittered. Yeah, we got glitter bombs. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to get glitter. I tried, but I didn't. They ran off. They denied you. Um, yeah, man. That's that, that. This was a fun day, but man, we're so fucking fried. Yeah. I got uh, four hours of sleep, and that's like being generous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm not even sure. You're like offering me drinks, and I'm like. I'm just going to take a nap if you put any alcohol in me whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. any alcohol and I'm done. Um, we are reading Poisoned Oak uh, from the creepypasta.com. Uh, from creepypasta.com. So if you click that link below to read along, make sure you enable that ad block. Um, <laughs> or else your computer will get poisoned. Oaked. Um, also, just don't support them because they're shitters. Anyway, uh, this has an 8.5 uh, 8.5 out of 10 with 441 votes. Okay. So we'll see if it holds up. Earns that. Okay. But that's the problem with cutting down a tree. And no one tells you how dangerous it might be. Sure, they'll warn you about the falling branches and staying out of the way while the job is being done. But that's not what I'm talking to you about. I'm talking about how the tree you are about to cut down might make the Lorax come out and stab you in the testicle. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> Wrong story. Uh, I'm talking about how the Wrong tree, fan fiction. <laughs> tree you are about to cut down might be the one thing standing between you and something very bad. Maybe that's the reason trees have been the object of worship throughout history. Uh, could it be because they are extremely good at keeping things out of our world that we don't want in it? Or could it be that there wasn't a tree that was being worshipped, but rather whatever it was that the tree was keeping at bay? So, Tim Curry and Ferngully? Yeah! Of Texas? Yes. Yeah. Go, go look up the, the creepy goo man in uh, Ferngully. Yes, and his creepy goo man songs and that were sung very goo well by, by Tim Curry. Um, I would not recommend actually watching Ferngully, oh, though. Oh, I love Ferngully. It's, it's one of those nostalgia things yeah. where you, you, you're like, Oh yeah, I remember oh, Ferngully! Yeah, and then you watch it and you're like, oh... Oh. I'm, I'm imagining that Tim Curry just has, like, a business card that's like, Tim Curry, professional creep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's very good at, like, creepy roles. Like, yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that Hexus was, like, what got me into creepy stuff. Yeah. Because his final form was, like, a magma tar skeleton. Right. Which was so cool. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be getting any magma tar skeletons, though, in this story. I mean, you never know. You never know. Well, that's true. Unfortunately for me, the reason our ancestors started worshipping trees in the first place is something most of us have long forgotten. Until now. I bought the house in the spring of 2009. It was on the Old Kings Highway that cuts through Connecticut between New York and Boston. While it no longer qualifies as a highway by today's standards, it is still a fairly busy road. There's a nice historical marker in the front yard of the house claiming that it had been built in, the, in 1700. Of course, the previous owners, of which there were many, had made many improvements to the original house over the years, so it had an updated kitchen and bathrooms. It also 
It also has a lot of old growth oak trees in the yard. I believe they're black oaks, but I've never been one to care that much about this oak or that oak. Sounds like the kind of person that thinks a dogwood is an oak. Yeah, I mean, like, why is it got why is it got to be a black oak? <laughs> uh, yeah. So here here's the important question: If you came across this in the wild, would you keep reading? From like two paragraphs in, do you think that this would like capture your attention? Mm, kind of so so. Depends on what I. It depends. Like if I, if I was just killing time waiting for something, maybe I'd keep reading this. Yeah, you're just like, and well, that's the thing. Okay, you pull this up and you're in the bathroom and you just want to read something. Right. Are you going to like look for a different story or are you going to keep going down this path? I might keep reading it. I, I'm pretty interested. So. Yeah, I might. Yeah, I might keep going with it because it's like, okay, what the hell did you do? Right. What, <laughs> what, what did, did you, you bring forth <laughs> from the soak tree? So, I, well, I always like the concept of, like, forgotten wisdom. Yeah. Like, the wisdom is out there, and we're just doing something, but we've forgotten why we're doing it. Right. Because, like, especially liberal-minded individuals kind of, like, have the opposite, because it's like, okay, there's the Bible, and it says don't have gay sex, and that's because then you get doo-doo on your pee, pee and then that's not good to put in a vagina. Like, th there's that kind of logic, and then we're like, well, we don't need that anymore. We just need the logic of like, and, and now it's not a problem, we can just... It's not well, science. Yeah, yeah, so we have that, and then sometimes there's the opposite of like, we've forgotten why there was like a thing that we were doing, and I think that that's an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. Well, clearly this person didn't nice. have a magical ethnic person to guide them. Oh, like, yeah. No, they didn't have that trope going on for them. You don't know, the, uh, there is every chance for ethnic... Creepies, magma, uh, skeleton, magma Tim Curry. Skeleton, Tim, Curry. <laughs> Tim Curry's gonna come crawling out of the, out of the just, sewer like just singing toxic like Pennywise. Love. Yeah. Pennywise yeah. singing toxic love. <laughs> you like talked about magical ethnic person, and now I'm thinking, now I'm just thinking about Pennywise and blackface. <laughs> uh, if there are any artists out there brave enough to draw blackface Pennywise, <laughs> have at it. But uh, I, I don't blame you if you don't. Uh, there was one particular oak tree in the backyard that uh, was bigger and more majestic than any of the other trees in the yard. Was that grammatically correct? Right. There was one particular oak tree in the backyard that was bigger and more okay. majestic than any of the other trees in the yard. Its trunk must have measured six feet around, occupying the center of the backyard. All the other trees seemed to defer to it. Ooh, I like that phrasing. A tree house or swing would have seemed right at home in this tree, but it had, uh, yeah, had neither. There was a nice spotlight at its base that pointed up and illuminated the tree at night. Day or night, the oak was really nice to look at, and... Best of all, it provided excellent shade for the back deck on hot summer days. And then it started to die. I can't really pinpoint exactly when it started to die, but in the spring of 2010, when leaves began to come out, I noticed that a couple of top branches stayed bare. I didn't think it was cause for any immediate alarm. If they stayed bare, I'd just have them removed. So when they were still leafless in the middle of June, I hired an honest tradesman to come over and take those branches down. He and his team made quick work of it, and I didn't think anything about the fact that they broke one of their buzz saws on the first branch they tried to cut off. I figured it was a tough old tree, and a, buzz, a broken buzz saw was one of the hazards of the job. Mr. Tradesman, take those branches off that tree. <laughs> um... A couple of weeks later, I, I mean, that's a cool detail, though, that they're, like, that's just a small thing that, like, in retrospect, they're realizing was off. That there, there's just, like, the slightly, could-be-nothing bad omen of they broke a buzzsaw on the tree's branches. Right. That's... Dead branches, not Dead plus. branches, yeah. Um, a couple of weeks later, I noticed that some of the other branches on the top of the tree... Had, uh, the leaves had started to wilt and turn brown. 
As the wilting and dying began to spread to additional branches, I became more concerned. By the end of July, the bark on the branches were where the leaves had first died began to slow, slough, sloth. sloth off uh, and accumulated at the base of the tree. It was time to seek professional help, so I called an arborist, <laughs> your, your neighborhood ethnic, Arborous. magical ethnic Tim Curry arborist. Yeah, skeleton. Oh goop skeleton. She examined the tree and quickly came to the conclusion that it was suffering from something called hypoxlon canker. Um, and the really bad news was that there was no known cure for hypoxlon canker once the symptoms have appeared. The disease is internal and kills the sapwood of the tree. The mighty oak was going to die within months. It was shortly after getting this grim diagnosis that I noticed something else. My wired hair dachshund Baxter! Oh, I'm just imagining a cutie. A Prepare cutie. for dog death. But tootie! No, this dog is going to survive Prepare and for save dog the death. tree. Alright. My... From Tim Curry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my wired hair dachshund Baxter had a habit of lying down at the base of the tree in my backyard. In the dog version of Hope Springs Eternal, he was convinced that a squirrel would one day be stupid enough to climb down the tree into his waiting paws, and bearing that, perhaps fall out of the tree. He spent his days this way under every oak in the backyard at one point or another, except the one that was dying. At first I imagined he could sense impending death in the dying oak, but that wasn't it. Does my paradigm continue on, or... I no, would I think assume that's the that was okay. the break. Yeah. I got it. Since there was an ad. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. This, so he's, summoned, he's, he's clearly going to summon the Wendigo or something. That or, like, the dog is the magical ethnic. The ethnic. Yeah. <laughs> magical spiritual, ethnic spiritual, dog. Spiritual, yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and he'll speak with Tim Curry's voice. Exactly. <laughs> In blackface. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, what? I'm not wearing blackface, it's the dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, does it even count, I, I guess? Have you seen that Eric Andre sketch uh, where he he goes up to people when they're really drunk and, like, asks them, like, do you like the rules of society? It's like, no, I want to rebel. And they're, like, all drunk. And, like, as they're doing it, it's like, let's, like, to have someone come off from, like, stage left and it's just, like, outside of a bar. And it's like, we gotta put a little makeup on you for the camera, and then just like coat the dude in blackface. And he doesn't even realize because he's so drunk. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> and like, after he gives the interview and signs the consent forms and everything, his, fr his like dude bro friends are like, what the fuck are you doing? And like, pull him off. <laughs> it took uh, him a while to, to get around it, that. It really did take him a while. Anyway. Uh. After some observation, I realized that he didn't bother lying under that tree because there were never any squirrels in it. I could see squirrels in every other tree in my backyard, but not in the dying oak. Not only that, there were no birds in the tree either. Not a single bird on any branch, regardless of whether the branch still had leaves or not. That hadn't always been the case with the dying oak. It had formerly been full of birds and squir uh, squirrels and birds. I considered it strange, but didn't really give it too much thought. There wasn't any logical reason why animals would leave a particular tree. Little did I know at the time that I was right about there being no logical reason the animals would avoid a certain tree. It wasn't the dying tree the squirrels and birds were avoiding. It was something else entirely. And as the tree died, it was getting closer to getting out. Though the rest of the summer and into the fall, the tree continued to lose leaves and bark. Uh, it was apparent to anyone looking at it that it was dying. Uh, it occurred to me to have it taken down and be done with it, but I couldn't bring myself to do that. Uh, you know, that's the, you know, deal with like when you have a dying pet or something like that, is like, are you going to put down the pet and do the thing that is good for the pet, or are you going to let the pet suffer and make yourself you know, prolong the the suffering because, like, no, I don't want to accept that they're dying and that this mm -hmm. is the best thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's a that's a real world problem. 
uh, I had a weird sense that the oak was fighting back and simply not bowing out to the inevitable. So there's that justification I was just talking about, like, no, the tree's not dying. Uh, if that was the case, I was going to give every oppor uh, give it every opportunity to succeed. But the branches, but branch by branch, the tree continued to die until only the lowest ones had any leaves on them. By now it was October, and all of the oaks began to lose their leaves. So by the time all the trees were bare, I couldn't be sure whether the dying oak was gone or it uh, or it would once again sprout some leaves the following spring. The footstep, the footprints appeared in March. We had had a late winter, we had a late winter snowfall of about six inches of snow, which had tapered off in the early evening of the 20th. I remember the date only because the next day was the vernal equinox, the first day of spring. When I woke up on the morning of the 21st, for the bleh, on the morning of the 21st and looked out the back window of my bedroom, I noticed several pairs of footsteps in the backyard leading up to the dying oak. The footprints then spread out around the tree in a circle at the base. I threw on some clothes and made a coat and a coat. I threw on some clothes and then a coat. You needed a coat, put the coat on, went outside. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Gave back to the coat, put clothes on the coat. Right. Made a tree cozy, put the tree cozy around the tree, that way it didn't get put cold. Put the coat on the tree. <laughs> I threw on some clothes and a coat, and then, accompanied by Baxter, went out to investigate. I gave Baxter a brief look of reproach as we left the house, and his expression seemed to say, well, apparently you didn't hear anything either. It wasn't easy to determine exactly how many people had been in the backyard, but my guess was around six. By the look of things, they had formed a circle around the tree. That's kind of a cool idea. Like, you have this weird cult showing up at your backyard when Yeah, you're like asleep. in the middle of the night. Either yeah. you or your dog, which dachshunds notice things and bark at everything. Mm -hmm. I know I have like, would you Would you call the police at that point and be like, I got people like poaching around my backyard. Like, what do I do? Right. Yeah, or do you go out and buy seven more dachshunds? Because it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a kind of gun? Couple. <laughs> then yes. A couple, a couple, a couple of angry badgers. I don't know. Right. Fully automatic dachshunds. <laughs> One day. One day. I didn't have any idea who they were or why they had come. Cyber dachshunds. It <laughs> <laughs> the the next Terminator movie is gonna yes. be dachshunds. Yes. And then the and then the dachshund's like skin and fur melts off, and then it's just like metal Terminator steel tooth dachshunds. <laughs> oh, that'd be so cute! It occurred to me that this may not have, not have, bleh, this may have not been the first time they had been there. The only reason I knew about this visit was the footprints in the snow. There was no other evidence that people had been there. I followed the footprints out of the backyard to see where they had originated. They had ended at the street in front of my house, which had been plowed earlier in the morning. So all I really knew was that a group of people had come into my backyard sometime Did during they? the night <laughs> and gathered around the dying or maybe dead oak tree. Their purpose for the visit was a mystery to me. I decided that the best thing to do was to start leaving the spotlight at the base of the tree on all night. If they were, if they intended to make another visit, that might act as a deterrent. Well, so th this has had like really good pacing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've been pretty. I I'm like really interested to see where this goes, and especially this turning point of see, now there's snow and there's the footprints. See now now right. it's gonna be the the lead up to the reveal and whether or not the reveal is a flop. Right. Whether or not it shits I'm, the bed. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and and that's the term we use is shitting the bed. I, but that's the thing is like. I think once you get this far in, and if you're going to write something like this, it's it's really hard for it to shit the bed at that point because mm -hmm. it's kind of like proven itself. It's just it's just hoping that it doesn't. Yeah, there's I, I like there's this hope stuff yeah. where it's like right. three fourths of the story is really good, and then they do some sort of stupid plot twist at the end. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you were the tree all yes. along. And Baxter was the real villain the whole time. Ba Baxter. Baxter was Tim Curry. Baxter was Tim Curry. The Baxter. Tim Curry and Dogface. I never actually had a dog named Baxter. 
Baxter is just the tree's familiar. <laughs> Uh, soon the weather started getting warmer and the tree in the backyard began to sprout buds of new leaves. I waited anxiously to see what would happen to the dying oak. Was it dead, or did it have some life left in it yet? As the days went by, it eventually became clear to me that there would be no new leaves on the tree. It was gone. It saddened me more that I expected to see the dead tree surrounded by new life in the backyard. The sooner I had it removed, I decided, the better. Uh, in early June, I contacted an honest tradesman who, oh, shoot. who had uh, removed the dead branches, and I asked him to come back and remove the entire tree, uh, including the stump. It was... I was still on the phone with the tree service, looking out the back window at the tree when I first noticed what appeared to be a symbol carved onto the trunk. I'm just imagining, like... That's the you, yellow you, sign. You call up the Department of Trees. Hold on. Right. The tree department. Making the appointment for later that week, I hung up and went out into the yard to take a closer look. Sure enough, something was carved into the tree's trunk. It was a plus sign with a circle or a ring surrounding the intersection of the lines. The intersecting lines measured about six inches each, and the diameter of the circle was around four. I had no idea who had carved it there, though I had suspected it was related to the footprints I had seen in the snow back in March. Okay. So it's the Zodiac Killer. Because it's crosshair with the circle around it. Oh, uh, see, I was thinking, like, the, the symbol for Earth. Oh, uh-huh. But, like, somebody took the lines a little too far. That, and my immediate thought was just, like, Zodiac Killer. Right. Got it. <laughs> He's, he, he's here, and he's got his, oh he's my got his mask, so and he's here to terrorize you from the trees. trees die, Ted Cruz comes out of the <laughs> <Yeah>, Exactly. <laughs> Ted Cruz is actually buried under the oak tree. That's where the Zodiac Killer ended up. Yes. Right. There we go. That there explains go. everything. Oh, shoot. Sorry. You need to take a look at mine? Yeah. I think it keeps trying to pull from the... Yeah. I'll Guys... For real, turn on your ad block before you go to creepypasta.com. Yeah, seriously. I think it was trying to pull from my data or something and kept reloading the page. I took a picture of the carving from my phone and uploaded it to Facebook to see if any of my friends recognized what it was. Within an hour, one of them posted that resembled a Celtic cross. Sure enough, when I compared my picture to images of other Celtic crosses I found on the web, that's exactly what it was. Specifically, the pre-Christian version before the cross morphed into the Christian cross. Now that I knew what it was, it was time to figure out why it was carved into the tree in the first place. A little research was all it took to learn that the symbol was used by the pagan Celts as protection against evil spirits and spiritual dangers. So We can, we can tell this author from the way that they're implementing information and the information that they're implementing they're a, a pretty worldly person because they know about like seasons and nature. They know about uh, you know crosses, Celtic crosses, that kind of culture. Mm -hmm. They're they're kind they're a pretty cultured person, I would say. They mm -hmm. have a dachshund. They have to be. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Gary. Yeah. Um, armed with this new knowledge, things began to fall into place, or so I thought. I came to the conclusion that some local Wiccan, Druid, whatever you want to call it, had them zeroed in on my dying oak and come to the conclusion that it represented a threat in some way. That would explain the visit from uh, on the spring equinox. The oak tree played a central role in the druid rites associated with it. You can learn a lot very quickly with the internet. Ah, wow, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oak. And, at the very same, uh, and the very same folks had likely been the ones to carve this uh, Celtic cross into the trunk. Uh, I guessed that both of these actions were efforts to remove whatever threat they supposed the tree represented. My plans were a bit more modern. Cut it down. <laughs> Over the next couple of days, I noticed that the dead oak started to lean to the right. Each morning, its lean was a little more pronounced. It was as if someone or something was pushing it out of the way. Bex... Bexter... Baxter... Bexter... 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 Hey, the Bexter... <laughs> hey, the Bexter... Bexter started to avoid going anywhere near the tree, which was interesting because I had assumed the digging at the base of the tree was his work. 
Most? Um, Pushing a six-foot diameter base oak out of the tree, out of the way. Just very slowly. But like... Very, very slowly. Your, your, your dachshund something... is too powerful. <laughs> right. <laughs> Alright. Most of Aith. It's, it's an yeah. uncapitalized I right next to... I, I'm guessing that's a typo. Yeah, that's clearly Most typo. of the digging was on the side of the tree opposite from the direction from of which it leaned. My mistake was to assume something was digging into the ground at the base of the tree rather than digging out. Frankly, it wouldn't. It would have been difficult to tell the difference. In any case, with the lean getting worse, I grew more anxious to get the tree down. As planned on Friday morning, the tree crew showed up, ready to take it down. If any of the team noticed the Celtic cross carved into the tree, they didn't mention it. They went right to work, starting with removing the top branches first. As they worked their way down the tree, I tried to ignore the growing unease I felt. It seemed irrational, but nevertheless, the feeling lingered. Around midday, the tree seemed to give a slight lurch further to the right, knocking one of the men cutting the branches off balance and causing the branch he was working on to suddenly break off. It fell to the ground and delivered a glancing blow to one of the other men. It hit him hard enough to knock him to the ground, and when he stood back up, it was obvious he had dislocated his shoulder. Angry tree. Violent uh, tree. Violent tree. Uh, you know those, uh, you know what they say about black. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you had to try to get that out. <laughs> uh, after the hurt worker was loaded into one of the trucks, and driven to the ER to get his arm looked at. The remaining men went back to work on the tree. By early afternoon, the only thing left was the stump. The smaller branches had been loaded into the wood chipper and chopped into small pieces. The large, larger branches in the trunk were cut into small logs and loaded onto the back of one of the trucks. They now brought in the stump grinder and turned what remained of the trunk and visible roots into a pile of wood chips that were then shoved back uh, into the back of one of the trucks. Uh, after that, there was nothing left to do but pack, and as they prepared to leave, I thanked them all for their work. Um, it was just me and Baxter in the backyard. Uh, I walked over to where the tree had once stood. I would need to put sod or, uh, over the area. It was now just a few scattered wood chips and loose dirt. Uh, that seemed like a really wordy, wordy paragraph for this story. Kind of like doesn't mesh with the rest of it, I don't mm. think. Mm. That was three days ago. A lot has happened since then. The first morning after the oak was cut down, I noticed there was a hole in the ground where it had stood. It wasn't very large, but it looked impossibly deep. Even if Baxter had the nerve to go near the spot, it wasn't a hole he could have possibly dug with his short, tiny dachshund legs. <laughs> <laughs> the second morning, the hole was bigger and still impossibly deep. Around the edge of it, around the edges of it, were bits of fur and bones and pieces of bones of some identif unidentified oh, animal. There were also markings in the dirt that looked like it had been clawed at by a very large animal. And the claw marks radiated outwards from the hole. I spent the rest of that day getting bags of dirt from Home Depot and filling up, filling the hole. Only it never quite filled up. Home, De Home Depot sponsor. Anyway. Yep. Home Depot, give me free dirt. Hey, if you would. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you have the promo code. Tried to get twenty dollars off Do your you rainbow. Do you have a cursed no. tree in your backyard? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Home Depot can help. That was yes. That was yesterday. This morning I woke up and found the hole was back and bigger than ever. There were footprints of several different people in the dirt around the hole. It wasn't like the time they had there appeared was a, in the there snow. There was a tree here. There's a hole now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hole where there was once a tree. It wasn't like this, the time they had appeared in the snow. Rather, it looked like they had been. There had been some kind of struggle. The only other thing I found in the dirt with a necklace. Wait, the only other thing I found in the dirt was a necklace with a Celtic cross hung from it. The necklace was broken, and I put, but I put it in my pocket anyway. That was 12 hours ago. 
As it got dark, I started to hear noises coming from the backyard. Baxter didn't come back from his from after from his after dinner trip outside and didn't come when I called him. I did eventually hear him start barking, but it wasn't a confident sounding bark. Baxter sounded terrified. He yeah. better go get Baxter. He better go fight whatever it is and get his dog. They didn't name him Leafster. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to come back. Uh, yeah, you can't put a dog on a stray without killing the dog. You know, it's just the, 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 the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm beginning to suspect that uh, it was never the tree that was in danger. The ceremony on the spring equinox, the uh, Celtic cross carved into the tree, were both designed to give it the ability to continue its job as jailer even if it died. Cutting it down was likely the last thing I should have done, and now something has come up from underneath where the oak once stood, imprisoning it. I don't know what it well, is, and I don't know what it wants, but I hear it outside the house's back door. Uh, Baxter's barking stopped long ago with a strange yelp. Maybe in between the broken buzzsaw and the dislocated shoulder, uh, the oak had been trying to tell me even a dead tree is better than no tree. I don't think I will ever know the answer to that. Uh, that's the problem with cutting down a tree. No one tells you how dangerous it might be. Credit to Luma King. Um, I enjoyed that. I think it's good. But I think the ending is a little too succinct. Yeah. Um, the last story we read didn't give any explanation. This one, I think, is a little too concrete in the ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could have, I guess it could have done with a good Lovecraftian tapering off, just right. kind of cutting off at the end of the story. Right. I mean, he wasn't exactly good about that, because he would write R right. at the end. <laughs> but just sort of, like, ending it in the middle of, like, a sentence or a word or something would have been good, because it's like, oh shit, what happened? Mm -hmm. Like, what was it? Mm -hmm. It got in and got him, clearly. What was it? <laughs> yeah, the, the ending was... Uh, we don't know what it was that they let open, but right. like it, it could have just ended before explaining like, here's what the tree was doing. Just let that, like, just go back and reread the story, and the beginning of the story will tell you what they're trying. What they're the beginning of the story is foreshadowing perfectly fine what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that the ending was a little bit too much. I wouldn't say shit's a bad, I think just... Mm -hmm. It was just a little bit... It's like when you saw... Yeah, it kind of farted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, little, a, little, a little fart. Just a little fart. I was going to say it oversalted its food, but mm -hmm. like, you know, fart, farting the bed. Yeah, farting the bed, but you know, it's not... It's a not little Dutch oven going on. Yeah, it's got a little Dutch oven going on. I will say, there was no concrete evidence that Baxter died. Maybe Baxter survived. Maybe Baxter got possessed by whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, Baxter is not, yeah, Baxter, Baxter is Tim Curry. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so where can people find you? Uh, I am CF Comer. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon under various versions of CF Comer. Where can they find you? Uh, KG Mozart at Instagram. Uh, it's M O T E S A R T. Um, I pretend to be active on other social media sites, but I'm mostly on Instagram. Alright. <laughs> Are we just throwing our beads at the camera now? Mardi Gras! Woo! Okay.